Brody Hubbard's video, The Damned, takes on Brightwood. This piece was made during the 2023 WGA and SAG after strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, the film being covered here wouldn't exist. This is Brightwood writer and director Dane Elkar, whose previous work includes short films The Saddler's Son, Oak, and The Pond, which Brightwood is an extension of, and that Elkar starred in, as you can see in the still. It's a condensed one-man version of Brightwood, so watch it after, because it would spoil elements of Brightwood if you watched it first. Brightwood stars Juilliard School of Drama Zone Max Wartendyke as Dan, and award-winning stage actress and acting coach Dana Berger as Jen. Wartendyke was in Elkar's short The Sadler's Son, as well as notable series Wu-Tang and American Saga, Succession, and Longmire. Berger has guest starred on FBI Most Wanted and Elementary, and played non-binary inmate MX Crystal Tawny in the final seasons of Netflix hit Orange is the New Black. Just what happens in this movie? I don't want to spoil it, so I'm going to proceed with caution. In fact, let's take a walk. Well, I can't find my earbuds anywhere, so that's kind of a bummer. So uh, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Um, this movie starts out, I would say, kind of like a marriage story meets the Blair Witch Project. Um, I watched it with... Uh, good friend Tori Holder, who uh, compared it to The One I Love, uh, which I haven't seen. And Time Crimes is one that keeps getting brought up in reviews uh, because there is a, a time loop element. Um, but just starting off with Jen and Dan, um, not very likable, although your mileage may vary. I have been kind of on both sides of the relationship and peril. Um, Jen seems a little bit bossy and controlling, but some may say, no, she's fed up. Dan is kind of coming off as a screw up. Um, I've been that screw up. I have also been the one mortified at how my partner was acting in mixed company. <laughs> uh, no names, certainly not my current relationship. Um, but they, they have that struggle, and this is all over the course of the first few minutes. Going for a jog, you know, maybe a nearby park, definitely around a, a pond or a lake. Um, and suddenly, they find themselves going in circles. Now, the obvious metaphor here is that they are going in circles uh, with their relationship whether to be on or off. Uh, they are married, so, you know, it's a little bit higher stakes, right? A divorce rather than just uh, splitting up and moving out on each other. And that anxiety over relationships, you can relate to, marital or not. Um, I may have been in the marriage boat more than once, so I'll, I'll just say that I get it, I got it. <laughs> um, and uh, even if you're sailing smoothly now. It's uh, over almost a 20 year relationship, can definitely relate to bumps in the road. Um, however, it doesn't end there. It's, it's not just about the marital strife. Something happens at some point and we get more into, I would say, this liminal space where the woods and the pond, the lake, uh, Brightwood, it becomes less of a real place. It becomes more of a, a maze, a labyrinth of sorts. And there is some self-discovery here, and there is some examining the dynamic of the relationship itself and what kind of people do we want to be? What kind of people do we want to be with each other? And that is, I will, again, without spoilers, say that that becomes epitomized in the most shocking of ways. Um, you know the actor's credentials. Brilliant actors. Even if I found Jen and Dan 
annoying <laughs> at the beginning and again int intentionally so they're they're getting on each other's nerves so they're gonna get on your nerves as well um but those problems are going to feel so petty in the the rear view speaking of rear view i feel like i passed that tree already um but i couldn't have that garbage okay um as they kind of have to deal with this as they have to deal with a more dire situation. And I said about this film um, in some online conversation um, and, and watching it with my friend Tori, you know you're in for some Twilight Zone mysteriousness, but like recent films Barbarian and Orphan First Kill, you get to that midway point of the narrative uh, or, or, or almost midway, where the the OMG, the, the holy shit moment, where you realize that the ride that you have strapped yourself in for, and going along for the, the, the scary ride all the way down, and I do mean down. <laughs> um, and so my, my caution for you is, you begin to watch it, there are parts in the beginning where it's like, okay, I, I know some surreal stuff is going to happen, but even the dialogue feels a little dreamy. Some of the exchanges begin to feel surreal. Like, are we watching a kind of David Lynch film where people talk oddly sometimes? No, it's very intentional. It's not just for artsy sake. It's not pretentious. It's like, this exchange feels off for some reason. And then you realize, that's why. We actually paused the film, Tori and I said, that's why that happened. And they said that in that way and looked like that while they were saying that. <laughs> you have to play catch up. And it makes you, after you've gone through the whole journey with Dan and Jen, I want to go back to the beginning of this movie and watch it all over again, knowing now what I know and um, see what I missed and confirm that I was right when I got an inkling about something being off. Speaking of things being off, I am not, I'm kind of recognizing these trees, but it looks a little different, but like, I, okay. We have seen bad things happen in the woods. We have seen scary figures and with the aforementioned Blair Witch Project and several other films we have seen the horror of being lost and this has all of that for sure but it is all a beautiful allegory for the ups and downs of relationships and again no spoilers but that ending I can tell you that my friend Tori, who I watched this with, saw it very differently than I did. There was the word disgusting <laughs> used at one point, um, but just not ideal circumstances for the characters, Tori said. Whereas I found it very beautiful, where I was touched and it might have been in a very twisted way. There is resolution. I don't know if it's closure. Kind of the point of the movie is about the choices we make when walking in these circles and trying to break out of these circles. Do they break out of the circle? Do they find a more hospitable circle? Is life now better for Dan and Jen than before they entered those woods together? and took that walk around the lake before they arrived at Brightwood. These are the questions you'll have to ask yourself with Elkar's wonderful writing, brilliant plot here, the cinematography, the sound design, putting you in that headspace, keeping you in that headspace. Hopefully you won't have headaches like Jen and Dan get in the movie, but you definitely will be scratching your head, trying to make it all make sense, but it will. Stick with it. It will.
I have to say that it's one of my favorites this year and, and definitely one I'm going to continue to think about and rewatch and recommend to friends. And I gotta thank Ted Gagan once again uh, for being a friend to Video the Damned and setting us up with these great films to watch. Um, this one coming out Tuesday, August 22nd, Video On Demand. The usual places, look for it there. I think I know that guy. I'm gonna go tell him to watch this movie. Till next time, I remain hub. So does he. What do you got there, some vegan jerky?